I really like Keyboard Maestro, and if you're watching this video, you probably do too. One of the things you spend a lot of time doing in Keyboard Maestro is adding actions to macros. So this is a macro, and it says no actions, so we're going to add an action to it. And we might do something like that, or better yet, that. My favorite way of adding actions is insert action by name which lets you type in something and you get an action just like that. One of the downsides is when you insert an action, they come in in a generic state and you always end up changing a lot of parameters and things until you get it the way that you want. Wouldn't it be nice if you could set up actions beforehand that have the parameters set exactly the way that you want and then insert them? It sure save a lot of time. Well, now you can. I've created a set of macros called Favorite Actions and Macros that allow you to set up actions exactly how you want them, with parameters how you want them, and be able to insert them easily. Something like this. Here's an if statement with the parameter already set to variable is empty. Here's one that checks trigger value. Here's a more complex one. It's colored. It has multiple actions. And it comes in collapsed because that's exactly how I like it. So let's talk about how you do these things. On my system, I have it set up to use F15 to do the various actions that you can do. You obviously can set it up however you want, but I have F15 and variations of F15, and that's what I'll be talking about through this. So I have it set up with F15 to bring up the select dialog. This doesn't show anything because this is a brand new installation. I may decide to ship some actions with this, but right now it doesn't come with any. By default, the way this is set up, if you press F15 once, it brings up this select favorite actions dialog. So if you type something in and there's nothing that matches it, you can press F15 again and it changes to the insert action by name. It also types in what you had in the filter before. Let me show that to you again. So there's nothing here. I type if, there's nothing here. I press F15. It brings up insert action by name and it types in if and filters on if. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and it inserts the action. Now let's customize this a little bit and change it to variable condition and say is empty, okay? Now I'll select it and I'll press Command F15. That's how you add an action. So it's going to take the selected action here and add it as one of your favorites. So that's Command F15 and it comes up and it tries to get a name from the action. Sometimes the name is worthwhile, sometimes it isn't. Let's change the name and have this be a variable is empty. Okay, let's get rid of this so we can watch it work. So there we go, if variable is empty has a picture of what the action looks like, and if we use it, it inserts it just like that. So here we've added an action that's customized. It has this parameter set to the variable and is empty. Let's do another one. In fact, we can just start, we can just use this one. Let's say is not empty. And we'll add this one, and we're gonna say variable is not empty. And now we have two, if variable is empty, see variable is empty. And variable is not empty. So that's how easy it is to add them. So here's what's going to happen when you use this on a regular basis. You're going to bring this up and you're going to see that what you want isn't in there. So you can jump over to insert action by name. So here's a prompt and even though we're not going to customize this, I'd still like to have it in my in my favorite actions list. So let's do it. Uh, prompt for user input is fine. And there we go. And now we have prompt for user input. Okay, let's do a different one. Let's do set variable. Set variable to text. So we'll add this one, set variable to text. Now we're gonna add a keyword. You can add multiple keywords. And what these are is these are things that the filter searches on, but it doesn't display them. I'll show you. So now I bring this up and notice it doesn't say SVX in here, but SVX brings it up. 
Here's a more obvious use of keywords. Play a random track. So I'm going to add some more keywords to this. Keywords are not case sensitive, so. So now when I search, I can search for song or iTunes or any of the other keywords I've entered. So now let's make one a little more complicated. Here I've got an if statement where I've changed the name and it checks to see if trigger value is empty. And if it is, it displays a notification and cancels the macro and it's yellow in color. Now when I insert this, I actually don't need to see any of this. There's nothing to change. It's set up the way that I want. So that's the way I want it inserted. So let's add it. And I'm going, well, actually it got the title from there. So that's, that's pretty good. So now here's insert or here's assert parameter was supplied. I paste it and it is, it comes in collapsed, the right color and all these things set up the way that I want. But here's a funny thing. Even though I want it inserted, collapsed, I'd rather see a different picture here. So I'll show you how to change the picture. I want the picture to look like this. So we pick an existing action and we say update image only. Now it doesn't matter what's in here if existing action has something in it. So if existing action is blank, it'll use this and it'll actually ignore this. Uh, but if existing action shows something, this is what it's going to do. It's going to update the existing, existing action, but it's only going to change the image. Okay. So the image has changed, but the action still gets inserted collapsed, just like we want it. There's an advanced feature that allows you to run macros instead of inserting actions. This particular one doesn't actually insert an action. It runs a macro that I've created. The macro puts up a prompt, asks some questions, and then when it gets all the answers, it pastes in the customized results. Again, this is more advanced and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. The way you use this is you select the macro that you want to run. And instead of doing command F15 for add action, you do option F15 for add macro. Now I'm going to talk about the editor. Get to the editor by default through control F15. Here's all the actions and macros that you have, and you can change the names. You can change the keywords and you can delete ones that you don't want. There's also some options for changing the order that the actions appear in the pick list. This order. And notice here that I have if variable is empty before if text is. That's not alphabetical. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that because I have a new feature in the works that'll be out pretty soon. It's a form of adaptive filtering and it'll look at what you use most frequently and it'll bring those things to the front. So there are some, there are some things that you can mess with here. Um, I'll tell you just a little bit. You can pin things by dragging them up to the top. That means they'll always stay in that order. By default, things sort by name, but you can uh, add a sort name, which will cause things to sort a little differently. In this particular instance, I want to execute AppleScript to sort after execute JavaScript for automation, since JXA is what I use most often. So what I've done is I've set the sort name for execute AppleScript to a value that'll sort after the execute JavaScript for automation. That's about as much time as I'm gonna spend talking about that because of the new features I have coming up. Hopefully they'll be released soon. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about how to install all of this stuff. When you unzip the file you've downloaded, there'll be a macro installer app that you can run. Just launch it. And it'll ask you, where do you wanna put the resources folder? The resources folder contains things like the HTML files and things like that. The resources folder also contains your preferences. So I generally put it in someplace like this. 
And once you've selected the resource folder, it'll tell you what it's going to install and where it's going to install the resources folder. If you want to change this, you can click on it and change it again. And then when you run the install, it installs everything like it's supposed to. Creates the resources folder where you told it to. So once it's done installing, you'll have all your macros here and you may want to change the hotkey. Go ahead and run it. It'll probably start out with nothing in it. It may end up having one or two actions. I haven't quite decided what to do yet. But go back to the beginning of this video and you can see how to add actions and you're ready to go.